con René Stevens de JD Power and Associates sobre Initial Quality Study del 2014. Now we're going to talk to René Stevens, Vice President of U.S. Automotive Quality Studies from J.D. Power and Associates about the new report, uh, the 2014 report uh, from J.D. Power and Associates. How are you, René? I'm great. How are you, Xavier? Very good. Thank you very much. So a uh, very interesting report as always, uh, the 28th year, right, that this report has uh, been produced. Yes, we've been publishing for 28 years now, and this has been the premier uh, survey that automotors, uh, automotive companies and suppliers have used to benchmark their competition. And I guess now, now with uh, all that uh, being uh, so widely distributed through internet, re great resource for consumers. No, absolutely. I think it helps um, actually see in the data that uh, consumers are using this data to really make more informed choice uh, when they go to purchase a vehicle. Yeah. So the study, uh, it's uh, completed every year. Uh, you do a survey. Can you explain a little bit the process of how many people you interview, how many questions are asked and all those kind of things for our audience? Yeah, sure thing. Um, the initial quality study, um, as you indicated, it's, it's conducted annually. And we actually go out to probably about half a million um, customers over the course of the of um, several months. Um, we look at, we measure problems at 90 days of ownership. So pretty early on, that's why we call it initial quality um, survey. And um, what we do is, is um, um, basically we, we actually, as we looked at what came back, we had a total of over 86,000 surveys that were completed by customers um, that uh, went online. It's an online study. Um, and that was fielded in um, February through May of this year. And it covered vehicles that were purchased um, November of last year to February of this year, and 2014 model year only. Okay. Um, and uh, so uh, I saw in that resource that there's a little increase in uh, problems in general in the industry, but it's due to the application of new technologies mostly, I guess. Uh, wh why is that? I mean, I, I guess there's like a, a learning curve from the consumers that maybe the systems work, but they consumers have to learn how to use it. Or what is it? Yeah, um, actually, yeah, overall we saw a 3% increase this year compared to last. And, you know, it's not a huge change. Um, it's measurable, but I would say it's not a dramatic increase. We think it's um, a bit of a blip. There were two areas that drove it. One, as you just mentioned, um, was um, really technology-based and also new vehicle launch. Um, so as, as companies are launching all new vehicles, um, they, we find that um, problems on the all new vehicles um, tend to be higher, a little bit higher than the carryover vehicles or vehicles with relatively um, little change. And, you know, among those new vehicles, a lot of the increase was around the areas of things like voice recognition, uh, Bluetooth, um, Bluetooth pairing, and really the audio systems. And, you know, a lot of it around that area and the new technology. And manufacturers are trying, are putting this new technology and people expect it. Um, but they're also then complaining um, if it's hard to understand or it's difficult to use or it just doesn't work like they intended it to. So it's uh, not necessarily as you can, like, it doesn't work. It's just like it's like a learning curve. Yeah, some of it's a learning curve and some of it is it just doesn't work um, correctly. Like, take example, voice recognition. Um, someone will try to use their nav system. They'll put in a direction, take me to um, a certain address, and um, the address that will come up will be that same address but maybe in another state. <laughs> they'll have things like that. Or they'll say, call home, and it calls Henry. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so you, you get a lot of um, um, issues that customers raise along, along those lines. So, and it's across all manufacturers. I yeah. would say this is something that's actually industry-wide. Yeah, I know, no, absolutely, because everybody's trying to put more technology, even at a lower-priced cars, like the Nissan Sentra for less than 20 or around 20000 has some of this kind of functionality and it can be an issue so uh, in the report uh, Porsche as a brand won overall and they reported um, uh, how many uh, problems per 100 cars? Yeah, as you look at Porsche, Porsche has done awesome. This is the second year in a row that they have topped the name plant ranking chart as having 
the lowest um, the uh, lowest number of problems. Seventy four problems per one hundred vehicles, so an awesome score. And they had three of their vehicles ranked in the top of their segments: the nine eleven, the Boxster, and the Panamera. And the Panamera was the single best, um, highest quality car in the industry. Yeah. So when people uh, hear this number, 73 out of 100, it seems like a lot, but it really isn't, right? Uh, no, it's actually very low. Um, as we look at quality levels for the industry, they've really dropped to, to all-time lows, uh, meaning um, quality problems in the industry have dropped to all-time lows. Um, as, as you look at it, I mean, that's you know less than one uh, item that somebody has mentioned about their vehicle. And it doesn't mean it's necessarily something broken. Um, what this, this survey covers is also areas where people com um, have concerns about, say, the design, something they, um, you know, they, they don't like how it functions or they don't understand how it functions or find it difficult to use versus things that were something broke. Um, so the defect portion of this study has actually gone down pretty dramatically. Um, so this is actually a really a, fair, a really low number, and uh, low in this study is good. Yeah. <laughs> New quality study. Exactly. New quality yeah. Group. Yeah. That's great. So number two, Jaguar with 87 out of 100, Lexus 92, Hyundai 94. Hyundai. I mean, the Koreans have increased their quality like tremendously in the past 10 years, huh? Yeah, that, I mean, they are the highest ranked non-premium um, brand in the industry, and they were, they went from 10th uh, ranked last year overall in the industry to 4th, so they've moved up significantly, and um, now one thing, they, they did not have any, any launches per se, uh, but, but they had f uh, three vehicles um, for the Hyundai brand that actually ranked top in their, in their class in the Accent. Um, Elantra and Genesis, and the Accent was actually um, second highest in the industry for quality again. And so you look at, you have a Porsche at the top, a Panamera, second is the Accent. Um, so it's it's really saying, hey, we're, we're you know, really closing the gap on quality. So they, they did really phenomenal. Yeah. And uh, so the results of this uh, initial quality study more or less uh, reflect or have the same trend as the other re uh, study you do over a three-year period of ownership, right? Yeah, now VDS, um, uh, that's Vehicle Dependability Study that we do over three years, um, yeah, that, that will track. So three years from now, um, we will be surveying these same customers, 2014 customers, and typically what you see is um, there is a correlation between what you see in the initial quality study and then what we see long-term and durability. Um, not to the same level because you're looking at um, probably areas that get involved in more durability type issues um, versus um, some of the learning curve where somebody might uh, identify something that's difficult to use because they just don't understand how to use it yet. So a little different type of problems as we look at the, um, the, um, vehicle dependability, but yeah, very similar trend um, year over year. In fact, in the study we saw earlier this year, we also saw a little bit of a slight uptick in the uh, quality level. Yeah, and I guess uh, over the three-year three year period, I mean, uh, the factor of the owner taking care of the car is uh, pretty important too. I mean, if you don't uh, to maintain your car, it's going to have problems, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's very important to you know follow the uh, maintenance guides that the the manufacturers provide because it does make a difference. Yeah, and finally, in this study, you also rank the factories where these cars are made. And uh, and again, pretty, pretty pretty consistent with the, with the, obviously with the results overall. So the factories, I think the the, the best one was uh, from Toyota, which uh, in Canada, right? Yeah, the um, Toyota's uh, Cambridge South plant in Ontario it builds the Lexus RS. Um, they ranked, they were awarded the Platinum Award and ranked the number one in the industry. Um, and as, as as you just indicated, Toyota has traditionally done very very well um, from an assembly plant and from an overall model standpoint. And um, uh, when you look at, typically when we measure plants, we measure just defects and malfunctions since that seems to be more what they're responsible for. And they are down at 12 problems per 100, which was an, um, um, really an industry high for quality that, we, um, that we've seen across the studies. And then in North America, also General Motors Ingersoll plant 
in, in also in Ontario, Canada, um, has won the silver, and then uh, BMW's plant in Spartanburg won the bronze. So talking about the global economy, right? I mean, we, we just talked about a Japanese brand, uh, an American brand that builds in Canada, and a German uh, plant that builds in the U.S. So cars, I mean, they still have their heritage and their origins, but like cars are from all over the world nowadays. No, absolutely, and even think about the, the listing of the, the top brands of, um, you know, in quality, and again, as you indicate, they're really from all over now. It used to be in the past, um, the study um, showed that, you know, Toyota and Honda were, were the benchmarks, and, and they still are. I mean, they still are the benchmarks for, for what everybody's going for, but now you look at, there's also, now you have Porsche, and you have Hyundai, um, General Motors, you have Ford, I mean, you have um, a lot of brands, BMW, you have a lot of brands that are at the tops of the model of their segments and doing fairly well. So the quality gap um, really has narrowed amongst all the com companies. And, and now what we're seeing is kind of the next the next area of the, where they're going after is this whole technology side where, um, yeah, we're launching all this new technology. And over time, uh, the companies are learning with it, as we saw with Ford, uh, the MyTouch, how that um, yeah, that really come along a lot better. Um, so, um, so they've seen some great improvements um, going forward. Excellent, uh, Renee Stevens, uh, uh, Vice President of U.S. Automotive Quality from JD Power and Associates. And I guess for our audience, they can go to their your website to see the, all the report in detail. Absolutely, um, they can go to jdpower.com and they can look up any of the vehicles um, on the overall results um, that they'd like to see there. And um, certainly get back to me if there's any questions that I can help them with as well. Excellent. Thank you very much, Renee, and uh, great information for our audience uh, thinking of buying a new car. And have a great day. You too. Thank you so much. Bye. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.